Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. This is Kuldeep here. Today we are going to learn about QA best practices to log the defect effectively in any defect management tool. So as the part of today's session, we will see like what are the defect reporting component. One example of effective defect reporting and uh, in the last we will see a checklist that we can follow to ensure that we are reporting the defect in effective manner. So this is the whole agenda for the today's discussion. So let's start. So first let's try to understand that what is the need of effective defect reporting. As a QA it is our responsibility that we are capturing the defect in software product and we report the defect so that those defects gets fixed by the development team and we are able to deliver high quality product to our customers right but let's say that we found some defect and we are not able to log those defect properly which means development team is not getting the enough information with respect to that logged defect and they are simply rejecting it by marking uh, the comments as incomplete info or cannot reproduce. So the effective reports becomes very important in that case. Okay. So to avoid these things, we can follow certain uh, best practices and guidelines so that all our defects getting fixed by the development team. So basically I have taken the example of the Jira, uh, which is a defect management tool and it is widely used. So I am very sure that you will able to connect the things here and uh, if you are using any other defect reporting tool then still you will find the same kind of components for defect reporting. So let's see like what are the different components and what kind of information we need to provide with respect to each component. So first comes the title. So the title should be clearly written to increase the readability of the defect. So we should write our title in very clear and precise way so that everyone can understand just while reading it okay next comes the summary so once you have written the title after that you can provide the brief description of the defect which you have observed in the application moving to the next point that is the build and the platform there can be the multiple build numbers of your software product along with that it is quite possible that your product is supporting the multiple platform like the windows linux multiple browsers so in that case it becomes very important that we are mentioning the build number and the platform in our defect as well so that it is very easy for the development team members to drill down the things further and provide the fix as soon as possible for that defect next is the steps to reproduce so guys, this is the very important step. So once you are logging the defect, you should clearly mention what are the different steps development people need to follow so that they are easily able to reproduce the defect at their end. If your reproduction steps are not clear, then it is quite possible that they will ask you to provide the additional information and uh, maybe like they assign the defect back to you saying that it is an incomplete defect so to avoid this we need to provide very clear reproduction steps for defect test data it is also an important component because sometimes what happens when we have reported a defect and it is happening just due to some specific data set so in that case it becomes very important that we provide the test data as well so that it is easy to reproduce okay next the defect type 
So there are three category of defect type existing, new and regression. So existing means this defect was already present in the system, but somehow it was not caught at all. So we need to mark that defect as existing. New means that defect occurred in your current build only. Before that, it was not present in the application. And third is the regression. So this defect occurred due to some other changes in the application. Before it, actually it was not uh, observed at all. Next is the actual result. We need to mention the actual result of that failed test case as well. And the next point is expected result. So we should also mention like what is expected result of that particular failed test case. So the next is the supporting documents and notes. So when you are reporting the defect, you can attach the supporting files like the video recording, screenshots, application logs so that the team members who are working on, on those defects can easily find out the root cause of those defects and provide the fix. Okay. I hope uh, you got the point like how you can log the defect in effective way. Okay. Let's move to the next point. So I have just given an example like how you can log a defect in a proper way. So let's uh, say that there is a login button on any uh, web page and uh, after providing the username and password, it is supposed to be enabled, but somehow it is not getting enabled. So how you can log the defect for the same. So in the summary, we can like in this way, login button is not getting enabled after entering the username and password. And you can provide brief description of it like the login button is not enabled when correct username and password are provided then you can mention uh, the build number or the platform like build number is 1.0.2 and uh, platform is windows 10 and uh, you are using the chrome browser after that you can mention the steps to reproduce like launch the application enter the correct username enter the correct password so what is the actual result here? So actual result is login button is not getting disabled. But what is the expected? Expected is like login button should be enabled. So in this way, you can log the defect in any defect management tool. So this is just an example. You can add other additional information like the test data and uh, the supporting documents so that it is easy to uh, figure out the root cause of that defect. Okay. And now here is the a small checklist, okay, which you can give it for your reference to make sure that whatever defect is getting logged uh, in the defect management tool are proper and uh, as per the guidelines. So as a part of checklist, you can cover these items like the platform and version number of application. So it should be there. Assigned to development team members. Once you have logged the defect, it should be assigned to the development team members. Uh, you are mentioning the defect severity, what are the defect types, list any non-standard configuration setting with values. So in case you need to make any setting changes, then you need to mention there. Reproduction steps, supporting documents and link that defect with the user story. So with the help of this checklist, we can ensure that we are logging the defect effectively in the defect management tool so it, there are very less chances that it will be rejected by the development team so we will be able to get the fix of those defects early as well okay and we can retest those defects and uh, it will eventually help us to deliver the good quality product to our customer okay so friends that's it for today's session i hope it is helpful and please let me know uh, in the comment section that how you guys doing the defect reporting in your organization. Okay. So that's it for today's session. Thank you for watching my channel. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. Thank you so much.